Hey folks, this is Mary. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am trying out my microphone. I've had this microphone for a while, but I keep forgetting to use it. And I have it clipped onto my shirt, and I keep forgetting that it's there, and I keep hitting it. So hopefully the audio will turn out okay, and um, it, there won't be a lot of me hitting the microphone, which I know is a very unpleasant sound. So, today is Sunday, and recently I was looking at some YouTube videos, and I found one called Swatching Sunday. And it was a woman swatching her different watercolors, and apparently this was a series that she did. She had different brands of watercolors, and she swatched different ones on Sundays. And I thought, what a wonderful idea. I have so many samples, probably about 200 samples, that I have never used and never done anything with. So I need to swatch them, but I just can't seem to get myself to sit down and do it. So I thought if I started doing a little bit every Sunday, and therefore make it Swatching Sunday, that I would eventually get through all of them. And I thought it would be fun to record them, and you guys could see all the different colors that I have. So we're going to give this a try. And um, my recorder will go for about 30 minutes before it cuts out on me. So I figure 30 minutes is probably long enough for me to do some swatching. And um, we'll just keep doing this every Sunday until I get through all of my samples. Now, these that have kind of the blob on top of them... Those are my oldest samples, the ones that I originally bought when I first got into fountain pens, probably about two or three years ago. So they're getting older, and I don't know how long samples last, but I'm going to assume they're okay. I've had them in a cabinet, so they haven't been out in the sun, so they should still be alright. Uh, but if, of course, if any of them look funky, I'll toss those to the side. So, yes, these older tops with the blobs are my oldest samples. And then my newer ones, I have gotten the little rings, the little um, page reinforcers to do the colors. And these are my newest ones. And then if there are any that don't have a label on top, they're new ones that I haven't even put a, a label on top of them yet. Um, but this rack, actually, I'm embarrassed to say, let me see if I can turn this around so you can read it. Um, that little piece of tape right there says Bottle Dupes. And what that means is, all of these samples, there's, what, about 25 or 30 of them? These are samples that I purchased and never did anything with, and then went on to purchase a bottle of ink. So these are just duplicate samples that I have hanging out, and I don't know what to do with them. Um, actually, it might be fun to do a little giveaway if anybody's looking for some samples, because I have a bunch of them. <laughs> and I suppose I could pour them into my bottles and just have more ink, but they're already nicely packaged, and, you know, they have labels on them and everything, so that might be something fun to do. But this is kind of a word of caution for everyone, you know, be, be careful before you purchase something. You might already have it, or you might already have a sample of it. And that was something I did not pay attention to when I was purchasing inks. So we won't be doing anything with this rack, because I already have bottles of all of these. And I think most of my bottles of ink I do have swatch cards for, but I need to go through my bottles and make sure that I have cards for all of them, because I think there are some that I don't have cards for. So I'm going to set this rack aside... And I do also have to mention, speaking of samples, I ordered some Lamy Dark Lilac cartridges online, gosh, probably about four months ago. I, I have just been obsessed with trying to find some Lamy Dark Lilac ever since I heard about it. Of course, it was sold out long before I got into the fountain pen hobby. But I've just been obsessed trying to get my hands on some of it. And the prices for the bottles on eBay are just outrageous. I can't bring myself to pay that much for one. But I found some cartridges, and they were expensive, but it was an amount that I was comfortable paying. And they were coming from Russia, 
Um, I just did an unboxing of another package that I got from Russia, the planner cover. But these were some Lamy Dark Lilac cartridges that I purchased from Russia right about the time that the quarantine started. So I figured they would take a while to get here. But now that my planner cover from Russia has arrived, I don't understand why my cartridges have not arrived. So I was looking on eBay, and it's been too long for me to file a claim with eBay. So I think the cartridges are just gone, and my money is gone, and I'm very sad. I would very much like to have the Lamy Dark Lilac cartridges. So let's have a moment of silence for my lost Dark Lilac cartridges. May they rest in peace wherever they are. And I also saw that um, Ink Journal was selling samples on their website. And I saw that and I thought, oh, if I had just waited, I could have gotten a sample from them, which was much more reasonably priced. But then I thought, oh, no, I already have some coming. I don't want to buy duplicates. But now those cartridges have not arrived and the samples on the Ink Journal page are sold out. So I guess I am just not intended to have any Lamy Dark Lilac, but that doesn't mean that I won't stop trying. So here we have some Diamine Jade Green, and this came from Goulet Pens. And they do have the smaller sample amounts, so you have to be careful about getting your pen down in there. And I bought a bunch of lighter colored greens a while back. Let's see, diamond. Ooh, can you guys see that? And my E's are always terrible. I really need to work on my penmanship. Of course, glass pens are not the easiest things to write with, but still. Diamond. Shade. Green. I tend to press really hard when I write, so it does not make writing with a glass nib very easy. But anyway, I was buying a lot of different samples of lighter greens a while back because I bought a Star Wars Yoda pen. Let me see, where is my Yoda pen? Oh, come here, Yoda. Uh-oh. Gosh. I hope whatever that was, it wasn't breakable. But here is my Yoda pen. Do not, do or do not, there is no try. One of my favorite sayings. But I was trying to find a green that would match the pen. And I went through a lot of samples. Actually, this one isn't bad. But I'm not thrilled about writing with that color. So maybe I should try to go for a brown to match the pen. And I think I would have been happier if the pen was just all green. I don't really like the green and brown too much. But I digress. So I bought all these green samples to match my Yoda pen. But then... I never actually put them in the pen. I just bought all these green samples and they sat in the cabinet for the past couple of years. Um, I have used the pen. I just used it with the cartridge that it came with. And, and I like the pen. I mean, it's a Schaefer pen and Schaefer pens are really nice. And it has Yoda on it. So what's bad about that? All right. One swatch card down. 200 more to go. Woohoo! Ooh, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to write sample on these. Because I have my ring of... Um, I have my, my card... My How do I say this? The cards on a ring that are all bottles. And then I wanted to have another ring of all samples. And I just want to notate that on the sample card, on the swatch card. So, I hope I'm not going to get confused with which ones I have used and which ones I haven't used. And I thought I might, I thought I might go across the row this way. So, well, they were sort of organized by color, but they've gotten mixed up over the years. But I thought I might come across the row, so we'll get a little bit of each color as we're going. So I think I have five racks, five of these sample racks. One is all blue, 
and most of the blues I have sample cards for because I was working with those back when I was doing the 91 inks, 91 days. There's still a few blues that I haven't managed to use yet, but I will save those for a later day. Um, but the rest of them, I just have never gotten around to use. Oh, let's see. This is Three Oysters Delicious Red Wine, and this is from Goulet. And a lot of these samples that I've ordered, they were either on sale on the Goulet website, or um, I got them in the the random sample sets. I don't know if you guys have ever tried those, but I love the random samples because it's it's like it's like Christmas. You never know what you're gonna get. So this is three oysters, delicious red wine. And I don't know how long my water is going to hold up, but I can always pause and get some more if the water gets really funky. And I haven't looked at the samples on the Goulet site in a while. They used to have sample sets that were, um, I guess, curated by different members of the team. You know, Brian Goulet had one, and Drew had one, and Rachel had one, and I could never get Rachel's set because one of the colors on hers was always um, out of stock. So I really wanted to get her set, but I never did. And then I think they took them off the site, maybe? I can't remember. That's very interesting. Kind of a, a muted maroon. Wow, this is exciting. These inks have just been sitting forever, and, and I've never tried them out before. So this is like a, a little walk through history. Okay, this is Monteverde Garnet. And I think that's part of their, what is that, the Gemstone series? And there's a lot of pretty colors in that series. Oh, and this um this came from Goulet Pens also. And I'm generally not a huge fan of the red, yellow, orange family, the warmer family. So most of these colors have come from sample sets or from some other um, some other set that they were selling. So this is Monteverde, and my E again is terrible. Monteverde Garnet. People have told me that I have nice handwriting when they see the handwriting in my bullet journal. And of course, I use my Sharpie pen and I print very small because the generally the, the line spacing or the graph in my bullet journal is five millimeters, which is pretty small. And I just print neatly because I want to be able to read my notes later. But I don't think in general that my handwriting is all that good. When I write in my journal, I write in cursive, but it's really messy cursive. Ooh, that is a, a very pinkish looking red. So pretty. Alrighty. But I did get a... Um, I guess a handwriting book, how to improve your handwriting or something like that, but I haven't used it very much. And of course, if you, <laughs> instructions don't help you if you don't use them, right? So um, I need to practice with that some more because I would like to improve my handwriting. Some of my coworkers have beautiful handwriting and I've been trying to talk them into doing a video for my channel of, you know, using a fountain pen to do some, some beautiful handwriting. So we'll see how that goes. All right, this is Diamide Amaranth and this came from Goulet Pens. But I've also been thinking that maybe I needed to do some handwriting practice. And again, if I do a video of it, then I'll actually get around to doing it. Just like with my swatching. If I was just going to sit down and do the swatching on my own, I would probably never get around to it. But since I'm doing a video about it, I'm going to sit down and get all these samples swatched. So if I sit down and, and practice my handwriting and make a video of that, 
then it'll actually happen. And hey, maybe that'll inspire some of you to work on your handwriting too. Or maybe you already have nice handwriting. So do you have nice handwriting or have you worked on improving yours? How do you, how do you improve your handwriting? Probably just through use, you know. But again, I write in my journal a lot, but I, I don't worry about neatness in my journal because I'm the only person that looks at it. So it's pretty messy. But if I was writing letters to people or something like that, I would probably slow down and try to write neater to make sure that the other person could actually read my letter. And I do have some people that I, I owe letters to, so there's something else I need to get cracking on. All right, that is really kind of a pale, I don't know, it's kind of a dark pink, but kind of an unsaturated dark pink, if that makes sense. Amaranth. I know amaranth is a grain. It's a teeny tiny grain, but it's not a pink. I think it's white or beige or something like that. So... Again, I wonder where they come up with their with their ink names sometimes. Very interesting. Okay, this is Caveco Midnight Blue, and this came from inkjournal.com. I've only ordered one ink journal box, and it was this Caveco one, because I was really interested in the ink colors, and I was interested in the, um, the Caveco Percao that they included with it. And that's the only Caveco pen that I have, the one that came with my sample. All right, so this is Caveco. And I think the, the ink samples that came with this box are the only Caveco inks that I have. I haven't purchased any other samples, and I don't have any bottles of Caveco ink. Midnight Blue. I, I have an embarrassingly, embarrassingly large amount of ink, and yet there are still so many ink brands that I have never tried. Like Caveco and Ackerman. I think I've tried maybe one Ackerman ink. Ooh. Oh, wow. This one is right up my alley. See, this would have been something good to use for my 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 ink, my blue ink exploration earlier this year, but this was tucked away in the cabinet and I forgot all about it. Wow, that is beautiful. But I don't need a bottle. I don't need a bottle. Repeat after me. I don't need a bottle. So, <laughs> we will put him aside to dry. Thank you, Mr. Midnight Blue. You are lovely. Alright, and next up we have Platinum Pigmented Sepia. And I think the pigmented inks are the ones that are more permanent, right? The more waterproof ones. I'm very nervous about using the waterproof inks. So I'm, I don't know, I guess I'm afraid they're going to stain my pens, or I won't be able to clean them out of my pens or something. I don't know. So this is Platinum. Pigmented sepia. And there I go with the E's again. So I think the there's pigmented inks and there's dye-based inks. And the dye-based ones are the ones that are generally not waterproof, that clean up really easily and perhaps are more gentle on a pen. And then the pigmented ones are more permanent, but I don't know if they're necessarily harder on pens. Um, the gentleman that I bought my vintage pens from, he did tell me to only use dye-based inks in the pens and not the pigmented inks. But again, I am too scared to use anything in my vintage pens other than Waterman's Serenity Blue. <laughs> That's the only ink I've put in my pens, and I'm perfectly happy with that. I, I think Serenity Blue is a lovely color, and I enjoy using it in my pens. Now, I do have um, a Waterman Flex Pen 
that is just beautiful. Okay, so this again is a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Un unsaturated, an unsaturated color. I need to get better at describing colors. It, it seems rather pale, rather unsaturated. So we'll see how he looks when he dries. But I have this Waterman Flex Pen. It's a gorgeous little gold pen with a gold nib. It's so beautiful. This is Three Oysters I Color You Doldem from Goulet Pens. But um, I've been using the Serenity Blue in all of my other vintage pens. Got a little spot of water right there. But I was thinking that some black ink would look really beautiful in that Waterman pen. But again, I'm very nervous about putting any kind of permanent inks that might damage the pen. I'm just nervous about using inks because I have a giant bottle of Noodler's Heart of Darkness and I just wouldn't be comfortable using the Heart of Darkness in this vintage pen, this vintage pen that's probably at least a hundred years old. So I bought several of what I hope are more gentle black inks. And again, I have all these samples of these black inks that I've never done anything with, so I need to do, I guess I need to do a, a video where I swatch all of these um, black inks to see which one I like. Can I spell color? My goodness. I color you doldem. But I wanted to try out these different black inks to see which one, I guess which one looks the darkest. I really like my black inks to just be black, 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 super black. Just blacker than a black hole, which is why I love Heart of Darkness because it is just so dark and so saturated. But I think the more gentle black inks that would be good in my vintage pen would probably be less saturated and maybe less black. But since I haven't tried any of them yet, I really can't say what they'll look like. Wow. This is a very interesting color. I don't know why, but I was thinking this was kind of a brown. But that's definitely gray. Well, that's really interesting. Get a little bit of a drip out of him. Just a little bit. Maybe we need a little bit more, a little bit more ink on there. And get it to run around a little bit. Hmm. I don't know a whole lot about the Three Oysters brand. Um, I have a couple of colors. I bought a bottle of, I think it's Three Oysters Marine Green. When I went to my first pen show up in Baltimore, my first and only pen show, and um, I also bought a bottle of Three Oysters Cobalt um, earlier this year, I think, and it is beautiful. It is such a beautiful blue. I know I'm partial to the blues, but that Three Oysters Cobalt is especially beautiful. Okay, here is Monteverde Midnight Black. And I don't know if this would be a good black to try in my vintage pen. This this is not one of the samples that I bought especially to try out in my vintage pen. This is just a black. As you can tell from the blob on top, this is one of my older samples. And this is just a sample that's been sitting in the cabinet for years. Never been used. So we'll see how black he is. But the, the blacks that I've got to try in my vintage pen... I got Waterman Black, I think I got Pelican Black, and maybe Aurora Black, which I think are all supposed to be gentle, gentler inks. So this is Monteverde Midnight Black. So if it's midnight black, we're going to see just how black this ink is. I don't know. I'm a little 
not suspicious. I'm a little wary, not wary. I, I, I'll believe it when I see it. How about that? Okay, he's, he's looking okay. Not super black, but he's looking okay. Get a little bit more for a, a drip here. I really don't expect many different properties from a black ink. I just expect a black ink to be black, you know? But, um, which one was it? It was one on Chris Sines' channel. It's the Lamy Crystal ink. Uh, now I can't remember. Was it Onyx? I'll have to look it up again. But that one just had... It just had depth to it. it. It looked like it had different colors in it. And it looked like it had some sheen. And there was one that I recently saw on Manda B's channel. That was a black that had a really pretty sheen to it. So those are really fun and interesting. But generally I just think of a black ink as being black. Just flat black. So we'll see how this one does when he dries. And what do you think? Do we have time for maybe one or two more? We'll go a little bit longer. All right, so this one is Urban Ver Prey. And my French is very rusty. I don't know what that means. Green something. But it's a very light green. And again, this was one of the ones that I was trying out for my Yoda pen. Which never actually got in the pen. I think part of the problem with my Yoda pen was that it didn't come with a converter. And as soon as I bought it, I had to use it right away. So I popped the cartridge in it. And then I didn't have a syringe to refill the cartridge. I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know where to get a, get a converter. So basically all of these samples that I bought just sat. There, pray. Ooh. A little accent aigu. Alrighty. Oh, well, good heavens, I put the sample away. <laughs> and I didn't do my swatch, which is the whole point of these cards. You can't have a swatch card without a swatch. I don't have a whole lot of these Urban inks either. I have um, Eclat de Saphir. Eclat, Eclat de Saphir. Again, my French is very rusty. But I think that's the only bottle of Urban ink that I have. Whew, that is really, really light. Okay, so we'll set him aside. And I think we have time for one more. What do you think? Ah, uh, speaking of Urban, Jacques Urban. This is Emerald of Shavor. I know everybody raves about this ink, and I have ordered several different sample sets from Goulet, and this sample is from Goulet. But this is actually about three or four different samples that I have put together, because I kept ordering sample sets, and they kept including this in the sample set, like it's their... You know, their best-selling inks and one of the curated sets included in there. And I think I got a random a random set that had this in there. So I have a full, a full sample vial of the Emerald of Shavor. But that's probably all I'm ever going to want out of it. Because I'm not a huge fan of the shimmer inks. I don't really know how to use them. I'm nervous about putting them in a pen. I'm shaking this up, by the way. But I didn't want to make anybody dizzy. So I'm shaking it off screen. But I, I just, the, the shimmer inks just make me nervous. So I'm not very interested in getting a bottle of this. It is a beautiful color. And I think if I could get the color without the shimmer, I would probably like it very much. So I'm just trying to, <laughs> trying to shake it up enough so we can get a little bit of shimmer in our sample. Um, and I think I've, I've heard a few people mention other inks that are kind of like this color without the shimmer in it. But I don't remember what those are. 
And this is Jacques Urban. Emerald of Chivore. And that is a lovely color. Just lovely. But the shimmer just makes me nervous. Makes me nervous. Okay. What am I doing? What am I doing? Alright, so hopefully I'll get a little bit of shimmer for the sample, for the swatch. Ooh, yes, that is a gorgeous color. So pretty. But the shimmer just makes me nervous. Wow. Well, I hope there's some particles in there because I'd love to see what that looks like with the shimmer. But we'll see. We'll see how he looks when he dries. Okay, so these have had a few minutes to dry. They're probably not all completely dry yet, but let's take a look at them. There is Dye Mine Jade Green. And this looks like it would have some nice shading to it, but I don't really see any sheen or anything else going on with it. But still, that is a very light green. I, I don't think I would enjoy writing with that ink because it's so pale. And then we have Three Oysters Delicious Red Wine. And let me move that back a little bit. And again, I don't really see any sheen in there. I don't know if it would be good with the shading, but it's not really doing a whole lot for me. That color seems kind of plain. And then we have Platinum Pigmented Sepia. And this was another one that I felt like was pretty washed out. And it is. And I've never done any water testing on inks before. So Again, I'm thinking that the pigmented inks are supposed to be more waterproof, and, and I wonder if that one is, but it's just really light. And there is the Caveco Midnight Blue. That is beautiful. It's got some nice red sheen to it. Can you see the sheen? I'm trying to get it in the light a little bit here. It just has a little bit of sheen right around the edge here. And I'm not really seeing it in the camera. But repeat after me, I do not need a bottle of this ink. It's beautiful. I do not need a bottle of that ink. <laughs> All right. This is Monteverde Garnet. And I have to say, I am a huge fan of Monteverde inks. They're, they're really affordable. They have such a huge variety of colors, and they have really nice properties to them. Although, I did hear that the prices are going up. So let's not all get into panic buying mode. But I think they're bottles. What did I hear? I think I heard it on the Anderson podcast. I think they said the the little bottles are going up to $10 and the what is it? The 90 milliliter bottles are going up to like $20. That seems like a lot. I mean, it is 90 milliliters of ink, but still, going from 15 to 20 seems like a big jump, but this is a lovely color, and I like the little, it's not really sheen, but there's something going on around the edge here. I guess that's kind of a halo, but that's a really nice color. And of course, whenever I start looking at, at ink swatches, the first thing I think of is comparing with other inks. And I'm wondering how this would compare with Sailor Gentle Grenade. I bet both of those would look interesting together, but that's something to try for a different day. Today we're just looking at some samples. So here is Monteverde Midnight Black. And he's not looking very saturated, but I'm sure on this watercolor paper it wouldn't look very saturated. And I would love to compare this with Heart of Darkness, which is my favorite black. It was my first black, and for a long time it was my only black. But I have gotten an, another couple of bottles since then. And here's Diamine Amaranth. That looks like the Pale Sister of garnet. So again, it's looking kind of washed out. All these three, let me, let me move the rack so we've got a little bit better light. 
but these three are all looking kind of pale and washed out, which I, I don't generally like. Actually, these four are looking kind of washed out, and that's really not my favorite in an ink color. I like more vibrant inks, more saturated inks. I'm trying to move my cup of water out of the way. Let's see. Okay, who's left? We have the three oysters I color you doldem. He looks like he's still drying a little bit. And again, it's that very pale color. Why did I end up ordering so many of these really pale colors? I don't know. I was just ordering stuff. Some things came randomly. Some things were on sale. I bought a lot of samples when they were on sale. And um, and that I think that was a mistake that I made early on. I bought stuff that was on sale just because it was on sale, not necessarily because I was interested in it. And I'm not a huge fan of gray, but um, I don't know. There might be some stuff going on in there. Let me see. I feel like I'm missing a color. No? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, I'm missing one. Oh, <laughs> there it is. The Urban Ver Prey. Again, very similar to our friend Jade Green over here. And these were these were some of the inks that I was trying to get to match my Yoda pen. And just very pale. Not what I would choose in an ink at all. And not really a great match for the pen, I don't think. Okay. And finally, we have everybody's favorite, Emerald of Shavor. Make sure you guys can see that. And this does have some lovely red sheen. Again, I don't know if I can get that to show on the camera. But right around the edge of the dark area, it has some, some nice red sheen. And I see a little bit of shimmer in the dark area as well. But again, it's hard to get that to show on the camera. Such a pretty color, but just not interested in the shimmer inks. They make me really nervous. But if anybody knows of a good dupe for this without the shimmer, I would be interested to hear about it. All right, so this was it for our very first Swatching Sunday as I make my way through all of my many old samples that I've never used. And we got through 10 this time. Maybe next time we can get through a few more if, if I don't yak quite so much. <laughs> but I don't seem to be able to not yak, but we'll see how I do. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And if so, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.